Hey, bio class. What's up, guys? This is our project. About protein synthesis. In movie form. Protein synthesis takes place in all cells. But since cells are really small, we're going to use my house as a model. Yay! This street and pretty much all the borders of my house is going to be the cell membrane. All this space represents the cytoplasm. And my house is going to be the nucleus. <laughs> Welcome to my nucleus. This is our first stop on protein synthesis. Now, in order for protein synthesis to take place, we need three things. The instructions, the stuff to build it, and a place to build it. The nucleus is where we get the instructions. Now, the first thing we need is DNA. Oh, look! Some DNA! DNA is the blueprint for all living things, and it holds this blueprint in a code. These stalks of the latter are made up of sugars, which are the gray part, and phosphates, which are the colorful part. And before I forget, um, DNA is usually in a spiral ladder, but for conveniency, this is just a straight ladder instead. Now, the rungs of the ladder are made up of four nucleic bases. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. The nucleic bases are held together by hydrogen bonds, which are very weak. In DNA, adenine always bonds with thymine, and guanine always bonds with cytosine. Also, the nucleic acids are shape-specific. This provides that each side of the DNA strand will be the exact opposite of the other side. It also provides the code for a protein. But there's a problem. The DNA can't leave the nucleus. It's too big! This is where RNA comes in. RNA is a lot like DNA. It's created in a very similar way. First, the DNA splits at the middle. This DNA strand will be the template for RNA. This will be the completed RNA strand. The complementary bases come and hook up to the DNA, although thymine will be replaced with uracil in mRNA. Hold on a second, another detail. There's more than one kind of RNA. The kind Dan is building is called messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. There are two other kinds, but we'll get to those later. Back to Dan. Once the strand of mRNA is complete, it leaves the nucleus for the next stage of protein synthesis. Like I said before, we need instructions, the stuff to build it, and a location. Rachel will explain where we get the stuff to build it. Thanks, Dan. Proteins are made up of amino acids, which we'll be representing with the colorful blocks you're about to see. However, the amino acids need to be taken to a specific place in the cell. This is where our next type of RNA comes in. Transfer RNA, or tRNA for short. The transfer RNA takes the amino acids to the right zone. Hold on a second. The location where all protein assembling takes place is the ribosome, a small organelle in all cells. Back to Rachel. The tRNA takes specific amino acids to the ribosome, which is where we'll go now. Hey, tRNA. Hey, mRNA. Now that we're at the ribosome, we can begin protein synthesis. But how do we assemble it? Oh, no! Wait! Let's look at the instructions. It says here that the mRNA is specially arranged so that groups of three bases called codons match up specifically to sets of three bases on the tRNA called anticodons. Once the codon and the anticodon link up, the amino acid separates, and the chain moves along. Hey, mRNA. Hello, different tRNA. Once an amino acid leaves the tRNA, it hooks up with the rest of the protein in a peptide bond. 
I've got some peptide bond right here. Peptide bonds are very strong. Great, now the protein's finished. And now it's ready for use in the rest of the cell. Different combinations of amino acids create different proteins. And protein synthesis is very important because proteins are what make up the cell organelles and they create enzymes which do everything. Great, so that's how a protein's made. Yep. Alright then, later. Bye!